So how fast did dinosaurs grow? Welcome to the Natural History of Dinosaurs. My name is Benjamin Brigger. I'm a paleontologist at Utah State University teaching in the heart of Utah's dinosaur country in Vernal. So one of the things that we can actually study is the actual fossilized dinosaur bones. And bones exhibit a number of features that we can examine to understand how the animal grew during its life and can help us unravel how dinosaurs regulated their temperatures, their body temperatures throughout their lives. So to be able to study the dinosaur bone, we need to cut into it. So I'm here in the geology laboratory to do just that, to cut into this bone, to take a look at it. This is a 150 million year old a uh, Jurassic dinosaur bone that we're going to cut into so we can understand a little bit more about how dinosaurs form these bones. Inside the fossilized bone, we see that there is an outer layer of dense bone called the compact bone. This outer layer is called the periosteum, and that outer layer of bone that's really dense, um, the compact bone, provides strength and support to the animal. Now inside of the bone, as you head in towards the center, it becomes more spongy, and this is the cancellous bone. And this hollow cavity in the center, which can be hollow, is the medullary uh, canal. And in life, this would contain the bone marrow. Now the bone has, if you look at it, has all these little holes that are running through it. Kind of like, kind of like Swiss cheese. Now these holes are the Haversen canals, which provide blood flow through these osteons, which are like little rings of bone tissue. There are also larger canals for blood flow called Volkmann canals. Now bone first, it grows uh, as cartilage, which over time gets replaced by bone tissue. And the bone in life is made out of hydroxide apatite um, or other calcium uh, phosphate minerals. But as the bone becomes fossilized, the mineral composition is replaced by silica and or uh, calcium carbonate. And this makes the dinosaur bone really much heavier than it would have been in life. All right, now that we have a slice of this dinosaur bone, we can take a little slice of it and uh, we can then put this on a microscope slide. So we have a little slice on the microscope slide and then we can come over here and look at it underneath the microscope. And we can study the different layers of bone. Now the outer layer is called the lamellar bone since it's more thick. And the inner bone is called the Haversen bone since it contains more holes surrounded by these circular um, osteons. Now one of the things that paleontologists have noticed is that there are lines of arrested growth or lags that are found between the layers of dinosaur bones. Now many modern animals also show these lines of arrested growth. And paleontologists have used these lines of arrested growth, these lag uh, lines, as kind of like uh, tree rings to calculate the age of the dinosaurs at the time of death. So here's how it works. You calculate the growth of the animal by measuring the distance between each of the lines. You can assume that each line represents a yearly cycle of growth. You then divide by 365 to get a daily uh, growth rate. And then you can measure from the center of the bone to the outer part of the bone. And you divide by the daily growth rate and that will get you the age of the dinosaur. Now no one knows for sure why there are these yearly lines. Living animals that show distinct lines of arrested growth in their bones 
um, exhibit seasonal shifts in their lifestyle, uh, such as hibernation in the winter or long yearly migrations. It also has to do with, may have to do with uh, egg laying um, or raising hatched baby dinosaurs, where the dinosaurs may have not been able to feed and hence grow during that portion of the year when, it's, uh, when the dinosaur would be protecting a nest. More study of the diversity of line, lines of arrested growth are needed in modern animals to help understand the biology behind the lines of arrested growth. But this is a powerful tool that we can use as paleontologists. Using this technique, paleontologists have estimated that the famous Sioux specimen of Tyrannosaurus rex at the Field Museum in Chicago is 25 years old and that most dinosaurs reached adult size in 17 years. This is a pretty fast growth rate given how large many of these dinosaurs are. Comparing these growth rates, we see that dinosaurs had as fast or faster growth rates than mammals, and similar to many birds, which have some of the fastest growth rates in vertebrates. This fast growth um, led to a number of paleontologists to more strongly support the idea that dinosaurs were endotherm and homeothermic in the way that they regulated their body temperatures. This fast growth rate also meant that dinosaurs likely had to feed as frequently as modern birds and mammals do. All right, be sure to describe how the study of dinosaur bone growth has resulted in a new insight into the metabolism, thermal regulation, and individual life history of dinosaurs.